Hello, everybody. I'm going to attempt to do something that I've wanted to do for a while with this game, and that is do a frame rate analysis video with different in-game settings, the default settings, and then changes to the configuration files. And I think I've found a good mix, a good path that I could I could um, uh, walk and uh, this is going to be it. This is what I'm going to be running my benchmark. I'm going to do it each time. This is um, the settings I'm going to be using initially right here. Full screen mode for obvious reasons for the testing. And every slider pretty much up all the way. Um, I don't, yeah, there's no changes. It's, it's default everything. I deleted all the configuration files, backed up the ones I used, and um, then I let the game make them again. And um, one of the other things that I did was I went into my NVIDIA control panel and I set that to what i believe what i believe is the default which is texture quality on quality instead of high quality and the optimizations enabled um, no forced anastrophic filtering or anything like that so this is going to be the path that i'm going to take on each pass of the benchmark i'm going to be using fraps to record benchmarking data and here it is uh, yeah, this is kind of a long benchmarking path, but I feel it covers um, a, a range of different situations in the game. You're loading different areas. You're walking by enemies that load the UI, you know, for the name over it, if they're alerted to you, if they're aggro on you. I'm also kind of thinking that there's not going to be that much variability when it comes to players walking through this area, walking from Lumbertown to Velika itself. And uh, I'm not using a mount because I believe that that is another set of dynamic things that the game is going to have to load. And uh, I also want, you know, a consistent uh, amount of time for distance. And right here is where I'm going to stop and... Yeah, this that's going to be the run, pretty much. Okay, so let's take a look at the benchmark results that I have. And I'll go through them uh, one by one here. The first one that I did was the default settings with, a, with the default locked frame rate, which was at 80. Then I did my settings, which was unlocked. Then I did the default settings, unlocked. Then I did my settings with a 60 frame per second lock. Then I did my settings with a 120 frame per second lock. So let's go over them using some charts here to compare. Okay, so this is the comparable frame rate chart. And this does something that's a little bit better than using this, which is what you usually see from people, an average min and max frame rate with uh, you know different games, different graphics cards, whatever you end up seeing on YouTube or uh, tech websites. Um, this, the comparable frame rate does something. I don't know, I have to look at how it does it i'm not good with math but i'm glad it does what it does because i'm guessing it factors in a whole bunch of different things to give you something a little bit better than an average frame rate and uh as you can see here everything pretty much aligns the way i thought um my settings at a locked 60 frames per second shows a 45 46 Default settings at locked 80 shows a 53. The default settings with no limit 
shows a 65. My settings that locked at 120 frames per second shows a 69. And my settings, which were unlocked, show a 74. Okay, so right here is just the normal raw frames per second chart with all of them shown on, on, on this graph. And you could see how the locked frame rates are, you know, hitting that wall and pretty much staying there. And the unlocked tests uh, will fluctuate quite a bit. It seems like all of them dip down to the same amount. There really isn't any of them that dip down to a point lower than another one. And you can kind of tell what sections of the test they're getting to. You could you could see which tests are getting over to Velika. You could see as we're walking through, going out of Lumbertown, going through all those other areas that I can't remember the names of. But you could see how if I just showed you this, this wouldn't do anything for you. This might. I let you see it a little bit, but I'll, I'll stick on it here uh, just so you can see the raw numbers. This is, you know, your typical minimum, maximum, and average frame rate. And using my settings, I hit a max at 228 with a minimum of 36 and an average of 120. Okay, so now I have my configuration file loaded, but just to verify and show, this is uh, the settings that I use on top of my configuration file uh, for the in-game settings. Effects level 5, Lurid Display 0, Preset 6, which will basically put everything to the right, and then I will only put Lighting Enrichment on 1 to get rid of the blurry FXAA effect. I'm not going to go crazy with detailing everything that I change in my configuration files. I'll show them to you real quick. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to link them. So you can make the changes yourself. Because I make tons of changes to my S1 engine.ini file. So I will be linking in the description um, this s one engine.ini file, and you could test it out for yourself. The first thing that I would do before copying it over is take your existing one and just add dot back or dot default just so you have that backed up so you could reapply it later, which is what led me to try 120 frame per second lock. Okay, so now I am going to run, because after seeing all of the results um, with the graphs so far in my testing, with my uh, INI settings, and then I'm gonna use NVIDIA Profile Inspector to change um, my uh, NVIDIA settings here. And you're seeing what I'm doing here in real time. I'm just going to talk it out as I do it. I'm going to put texture filtering on high performance. Um, let's see, what else would I change here? Would I change anything else? Maximum pre-rendered frames to three. And that is due to something I've read about with Unreal Engine 3. And then I have already changed the frame rate limit to 120, which is the refresh rate that I'm currently running at. So apply on that. Hit it twice for good luck. And I'm going to see what this changes. Because I hit that 120, the average didn't go down all that much. But the average pretty much stayed at where the default settings average was. But you could see even if you use the default settings and you just change one thing, 
in that INI file, you could go from, you know, obviously on my computer, a maximum of 81 to a maximum of, of 211. But then if you use my settings, which are not graphically different at all. And right now I would like to show you a comparison video that I did. Okay, so right now I'm gonna do a quality comparison. So you could see the difference between the default setting that I was using and my setting that had the highest uh, frame rate and best smoothness and all that. I'm not going to run the whole thing. I'm just going to run just a little bit of it. So you could see if uh, you're actually missing any fidelity by using my settings. And also I'm recording this in close to 4k. So I could zoom in a little bit when I edit this. And you should see, I mean, it's a crappy FPS counter in Terra, but you could see it at the bottom if you even care about that for this comparison. Now I'm going to have to watch this later when I'm editing it, but I mean, this is how I play pretty much all the time and it doesn't look too bad. And I could still zoom right into my character if I turn off the UI. And again, it doesn't look too bad. Because most of the time, hopefully, you're not just standing around doing this. Or, you know, doing this, you pervert. And the last two on the graph really don't really need to talk about, you know, your default settings, which are locked at 80 and your my settings, which I locked at 60. And I locked it using the same method that I used for the 120 frame per second locked uh, of my settings. This is another chart which uh, will show how many milliseconds of stutter there is um, uh, during the test. So, and you could see, you know, obviously locking your frame rate to 60 will introduce a little bit of stutter mattering on if there is something called back pressure on um, the CPU handing off frames or something like that. Um, same thing, you know, all the locks are above two milliseconds stutter. And again, my setting at least with my computer, proved to have the least amount of stuttering. And I could probably further decrease that by setting core affinity in Task Manager so it doesn't use the hyper-threaded cores. You know, I got an i7 and it's a four core with hyper-threading making it eight cores. And the way that you would do that is, uh, I'll just pick OBS, I won't really apply it. You click on whatever process you want. And the way hyper-threading works is core zero and one, that's core one, two and three is core two, four and five is core three, and six and seven is core four. And it's the first cores of those that are actual physical processes, devices, whatever you want to call it, units on the processor. So if you want to program to not use hyper-threading, you would just pick those. And once you click OK, until you close the program, that program is just using the physical cores of your processor. And in my testing, at least with Counter-Strike, that seems to reduce stuttering and frame time variability. Thanks for watching this video. 
Um, if you got something out of it, if you learned something about how Terra works, if these settings work for you, if different settings work for you, uh, leave a comment. I'll check it out. If you want me to test something that you are suggesting, I'll be glad to. Don't forget to like this video if it helped. Like if it helped a friend. Dislike it if your performance tanked after trying what I suggested. And subscribe for more content like this. See you guys later.